start, we got into the Army story talking about Maynard, how you met Maynard, and we were at Crystal Beach, and then suddenly... Whew, Oh yeah, yeah that's that's career, man. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So man. you must have gone yeah, with the I'm... band after Korea with Maynard's band. Yo, yeah, that was after. Well, that's after sure. I came out of the service. Yeah. To, it was. Uh, it was actually before Korea. You when knew I, Maynard before. Korea. I knew. I knew Maynard before, and as I, I also mentioned, you know, Mo Kaufman. Right. Uh, Mo <clears throat> Kaufman. I, I played. I played with with him, because uh, he's from Toronto. Maynard's from Montreal, but I played. With Mo Kaufman, uh, well, that was way before you know his hit tune come out, Swinging Shepherd Blues. Right. I mean, uh, in fact, Mo Kaufman was about 19 years old. He was called the, they called him Charlie Charlie Parker, the Bird of, of Canada at the time when he first came out. And we nice and label we, to put on somebody, right? No pressure with that label. Yeah, right? right. And we and we all came down and we we came out of New York here and we did. Uh, it used to be a, a record store on 52nd and uh, Broadway called Mainstream hmm. Record uh, Store. Is that where Mainstream Records came from? At Mainstream. Uh, well, I think uh, I'm, I'm, I might I might not be, you know, uh, I might not. It, it might not I think be they accurate. might have. They might they might have had Main because they know because you know. Uh, the early there was two main. It was reissued. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! No! Wait! 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 Wait a minute! No! Not main. It wasn't the mainstream record. It was main stem. Main I'm stem. sorry. Okay. I no. Okay. Yeah. Right. I wasn't there a tune called Main Stem too? Did somebody write a song? Yeah, that's right. But that it was. It wasn't the mainstream. Right? You're right. It was main. This was the main stem record. Okay. Main stem records used to be. Right, right, right across the street. Well, it's a parking lot there now, but mm -hmm. right across from Birdland, mm -hmm. the Main Stem Record Company. All right. I mean, Main Stem Record Store. And what they did, they uh, when Mo Coffin, they also started a label, the Main Stem Records, mm -hmm. and and Mo Coffin was the first to record. Uh, and we, you know, it was a group, and we recorded. Uh, we came out of New York, and we, we did a, we did a record date there when uh, uh, with Mo Coffin, and then. Really? Yeah, uh, and then, uh, like I say, Mo Kaufman and, and, uh, uh, and Maynard, who they, they, they both hailed from from Canada. But what I'm saying, I didn't play with Maynard until I come to New York to live, when I moved out of Buffalo. But I knew Maynard before. I jammed with him at the Musicians Club, okay. right. as I said before. All right. and, and then when I came down to New York uh, to live now, I didn't have enough time in the Union to play in New York, in the New York clubs. How much time did you have uh, Well, I had to have, well, at that time, you had to have, uh, you had to be a resident three months huh. before you could get, before you could receive an 802 card. Wow. And, and could well, you not, were there, any, was there any activity in, in non-union clubs then? Or were pretty much all the good clubs union? Well, the thing is, you could, you could, you could play, I think it was one night a week. Okay. You could play one night a week, or you could play outside of New York in, the, in, in a tra or in a traveling group. Okay. Because that was the reason that I couldn't continue my job with Monk when he, when Monk first heard me play at Connie's, mm -hmm. you know, uh, up uptown, and when he was starting his group after he had been idle for about seven years. He hadn't worked in New York. And, uh, well, he didn't have a card. So when 802 issued him his card, and uh, he had got the, uh, he, he had got the, uh, you know, go ahead sign from, from 802 to go ahead and, and work. He got the, the job at the Five Spot, the uh, old Five Spot Cafe. Yeah. And uh, he had heard me play at a session. Mm -hmm. At Connie's Lounge, okay. And uh, he asked me, you know, did I want to join the group? He said that he liked the way I played, like you know, speaking about my beat. And that was another thing that encouraged me. So I was so, you know, fascinated by you know him giving me. You knew you were, of uh, course, familiar with his his music. Oh, and stuff. sure, yeah. yeah. Look, yeah. I had been. Well, see, in Buffalo, my God, that was, uh, uh, you know, he wasn't the only artist, you know, that I. That I would purchase the records, but I mean, I was really, you know, into into my music, and I loved Monk. I thought that he was, oh, you know, so so creative then, you know, and 
And at that time, he was with Blue Note. He that was his his right. records were on seventy eight at that time. Right. They were they was you know you drop one of those records you know or chip them and they break and that's the end yeah. of it you yeah. know. Yeah. But uh, uh, uh <laughs> <laughs> you know you yeah. remember that. Yep. Yeah, that's that's even before the twelve inch, you know. So he was. I'm just trying to think now. The group, the last group he had then before he was out was what with Griffin, Johnny Griffin, and Roy Haynes, and and, and that guy, and that, that band. Well, that was. I'll say that. No, that wasn't the last. Well, wait a minute. You you're saying in the five, you saying in the five spot or the last group that he had before he stopped. He, he got his card pulled. And what uh, well, no, you know what? No, when he got his card pulled, he was playing uh, uh, with with guys like uh, Sahib Shahab. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, Idris Suleiman. Right. The, and and those, the, the, no, when he got his card pulled, uh, no, when when he had that group of uh, uh, Roy Haynes and, uh, and Johnny Griffin, that was the group. That he had Wesley. right after. Well, no, that was right after I I had had left. Uh, maybe about I'll say six months after 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 I left left his group because you see the union man came and pulled me off the job in the uh, five spot cash, five spot job that he had, mm -hmm. and the union man pulled me off because in New York, and in fact he got on monk about it and he got on me because I really was I was working steady which I wasn't supposed to be mm -hmm. and, and oh it's a really it's a really funny thing I mean how <laughs> because you know as you know Mark is an individual he's always I mean well God rest his soul I mean he's he's passed but uh, uh, the union man came in and he he, he walked in and uh, over where and you? We're speaking, and me, you know, you speak of that. This three, would would you believe that? Hey, wait a minute. Yeah. That whole, they're all passed. Yeah. Look, Johnny Griffin, Wilbur Ware. Griffin stole man. No, no, no. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. Coltrane. Coltrane. Yeah, that's my mistake. <clears throat> John Coltrane. Wow. Was it? Uh, no, I was just here talking. I just, I was just thinking. Well, all, three of the, all three of these guys. Charlie Rouse and John Orr and that group. Well, that group didn't start. That came after the group. That, came, that came, although Charlie Rouse had made a uh, point with Monk, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, with Riverside Records, before he got it. See, Monk was recording. He could record, but he couldn't He couldn't work in New York. But what it was, you see, now that group, to answer, to answer your question, Scott, uh, Huh. That 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 group of Charlie Rouse and John Orr, that group started up around 1961. Right, around 1961. Yeah. See? And so what year was this now when you were with Coltrane? And, and well, that was the first that was the first group, the first quartet that opened the five spot. The the uh, 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 when the first the, the old five spot when it first opened for jazz there, down on 3rd Street. Yeah. I mean, 3rd Avenue, I'm sorry. 3rd Avenue and 4th Street. Yeah. In in the village or the Bowery, whatever. Yeah. Well, it's not really the Bowery. It's on the outskirts of the Bowery. But anyhow, um, it was John Coltrane, Wilbur Ware, and, right, John Coltrane, Wilbur Ware, and myself. Because late after that group, uh, Shadow or, Wilson. Well, Shadow Wilson took my place. He did. Oh shit! I didn't know that. See that? Yeah. See, you see, I opened and I stayed and I stayed with him. I'm telling you, it wasn't. It was a short stay. Yeah. It was two weeks, really. Two week. It, it was. Uh, it was really two weeks. I stayed because the union man pulled me. It might have been three weeks, but not anymore. Two to three weeks. The union man came and pulled me off off the job. He told Monk that I didn't have enough time. And Monk said to him, he says, oh, what, what, are you, what are you doing? What are you pulling, pulling my man off? The... He says, this man can't work. We said, this man is on, he's on transfer. He's from Buffalo. Mm -hmm. Monk says, well, yeah, I, don't, I, I don't understand. Can, 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 can you play drums? Man? Can, the union man said, what do you mean can I play? I'm not even a drummer. He says, I'm a... A trumpet player. I haven't touched my horn in twenty years. Yeah. 
He said, what's happening? He said, it's something, man. You gonna put... You gonna pull this man off my drum off, and you can't play. <laughs> he says, "What?" what he, he says, "Well, the man is. He look, he, he's on transfer. He knows wow. about. He should." So I said, "Oh, that's a jag. He kind of messed up my good." He says, "Can you swing like he can? Can you play the?" He says, "Oh, look, he's a human. Don't give me a hard time." He says, "Look, I'm a delicate here." This man here, look, I could fix it so he wouldn't even get his card. Says he knows he's not. So Monk danced around. And he said to him, he says, oh, he says, Jan, this is something else. Man. He says, you, he says, now, his a cat comes in and he, you're going to pull a man off who, 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 who can play drums. You can't play. You can't find me nobody who can play. <laughs> now, who, who, who looks stupid? You or me? <laughs> so, but anyhow, uh, it was, it was, it was, it was the, uh, it was Shadow Wilson who took my place. I left. I had to leave, like yeah. I say, because look, I didn't want it. I wanted to get my card. Monk was saying, "Well, look," he says, "Look," he says, "Man," he says, "I." According to the union, stopped me from. Well, see, Monk was kind of, kind of down on the union anyhow because sure. he couldn't. So I don't think he would have uh, had that type of attitude. But he was. He just. This is his first job. He says, "Oh my God, let me tell me here after seven years of guy, a union man's gonna come in and take." But wow. I left and went with uh, with Charlie Mingus. But the only reason was because Charlie Mingus was traveling outside. Of New York, I I couldn't have worked with him either if it had been in New York. Now you had I know like on Tijuana Moods they had you listed as percussion, right? Right, they had me listed as as percussion. But you you know what I I, I tell you, uh, what 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 uh, caused that? I did play. You see, it was me and Danny Richmond. Danny Richmond. Yeah. We but you see, what happened? I played on several. Uh, uh, I think takes on on that. On that particular album, okay. where I did, I had the uh, I don't know, it was a tamarind or it was some tamarind, uh, a, a, yeah. a tamarind or something. I was shaking. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, and and that and that's the and and uh, uh, and and that's and I did a few. Danny Richmond did play most of the tunes. Yeah, on the on the drum, I played a few. On the drums, I did. I did play a few on the drums, but they had me on percussion because most of the things. That I did was with the with the the shakers and the tamarind. Do you know which ones you did? Now that so it goes, Scott. I tell you, that's going back ago. so so far. Could you, if you heard the record again, you could tell, right? I I probably could. Yeah, yeah. I I am well, I sure I yeah. I could. You know, but it's been it's been so long ago. But that's the reason that they call it percussion because of the fact that uh, you see, Danny Danny Richmond was was see Danny Richmond was really. His his, uh, his 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 regular drummer. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You know. So Danny, when you well, when how'd you go out with Mingus? What happened to Danny? You just couldn't. Do well, it. see, that was that was a job in Washington D.C. You know, at the uh, at the uh, Del Mar. I think it was at the right. It was at the Del Mar Hotel. Yeah. Downstairs, that that right. Danny couldn't. He couldn't make that. Yeah. And uh, he couldn't make that particular job. And I knew I was just you know basically going fill in, and for for Danny. Uh, Although I knew that, you know, later on, you know, if Mingus, you know, liked my work, you know, I would get, you know, other jobs or either, you know, be recommended in which he did. Yeah. He did do that. Yeah. You know, he, he recommended, you know, me to Sonny Rollins, who yeah. I went with later on. He, mm -hmm. uh, he told Sonny and, uh, about my plan. And although he had Danny as his regular drummer, uh, and I, you know, I it was it was it was an experience because you know that that kept me yeah it kept it kept me it kept me together you know because I couldn't work in New York yeah and and I came I I got the job with Sonny Rollins, uh, in fact well it was Charlie Mingus and Monk who recommended me to Sonny to Sonny wow yeah to Sonny and and uh, uh, then I I went with Sonny Rollins and. Uh, I worked with him on some out of town things, and then uh, he uh, 
He, in fact, Sonny Rollins got me into 802. Uh, you know, it's amazing. You know what? I, I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful towards Sonny Rollins because he took a chance. You know, I, I uh, went in Birdland with him when Maynard's band was there, when Slide Hampton and all of them were there. You know, to, to hear me playing in Birdland, Maynard was in roots for a drummer. He uh, he was looking for a drummer because at that time, well, this is way before Mel, because Mel Lewis, he had left yeah. out in California. Right, right. But it was Clarence, I think it was Clarence Johnston that was there. and Or uh, uh, Jake Hanna. Jake I'm Hanna. sorry, not, not Clarence. Jake Hanna was leaving. And Sonny Rollins was in there with his trio and it was the big band of Maynard. And that's how... That's how Maynard really had gotten to really hear me play. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, not that he hadn't heard me. He hadn't heard me since Buffalo years, but uh, I had, you know, gotten a little better since then, you know. Uh, but anyhow, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, I, I had learned a few few more licks, you know, by that time I got into Berlin. But well, anyhow, so that, that chronologically is interesting because I thought that that, that uh, would have been like Maynard and then Monk and then Mingus, but it was with Monk for a couple of weeks, then Mingus for a little bit, that, that's then what, Maynard. That's what it that, Yeah, that's the way it was. You see, okay. I, oh, hey, I paid my dues, Scott. <laughs> that's what it boils well, down to. Yeah. Ah, yeah, I paid, I paid the dues. How was Mingus when you were playing? Was he good to work for? Mingus was very, look, Mingus was, he was, his music was, was accurate. He was, yeah, he was, he was okay to, uh, to work for. He, he would, uh, things that he, you know, you had to get used to his method. Yeah. See, he might jump up and he, not that he's really angry at you, yeah. but he would, he would sometimes holler over to the things that he'd want. I mean, and, uh, you know, and sometimes like if you're not mentally, if you're not, you know, geared to receive that type yeah. of an approach, yeah. you, you might, you know, take offense. And which most musicians did. Yeah. Because they couldn't... That's why I give Danny Richmond so much credit because <laughs> Danny Richmond stayed there so, so long, long yeah. and Mingus would holler at that... Danny, Danny, hey man, but... No, you're the precious, man. Don't you stick... stick, stick to, Danny, you know, keep the symbol like it is. Danny, what you doing, Danny? And I, really? I think, yeah. hey, that's the way he would. Was he hollering at me? You know, and you I filled a tough spot because I feel a very tough spot when I went in with 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 and Mingus. Look that on that record date. Look now the record date which <laughs> we were talking about the Tijuana and moves. That was uh, the record date that was complete. I did another date that was on Bethlehem. I don't know whether the one that I. Well, no, that's right. The one that I did wasn't released on Victor. It was released with Bethlehem. Bethlehem. I did, yeah, I did a date. That that record, which will be, I have to give, you know, give give credit where credit's due. That particular record will be a collector's item. I don't give a damn how long the world stands here. You could dig this particular record up by Mingus 50 years from now. It'll be a collector's item. It's called Tales of the City. Huh. And it was the original lyrics were, were written by Langston Hughes, and I was playing a garbage can. Not even was a drummer. I was called a garbage can top on this particular one. Now, like literally a garbage can. Top? That's right. That's gar <laughs> I on with Mingus with Charlie Mingus. Yeah. Now it was the the and what it's it's all about. It's about the. It's like a musician who's coming to New York. He's a jazz musician. He wants exposure. Yeah. And Mingus is mine, you know. He was so, f just like Monk, so far advanced. Yeah. I mean, it it had the, the lyrics, the original lyrics, monologue was uh, uh, written with Langston Hughes. Mm -hmm. Now, he, Langston Hughes wrote the monologue, but Langston Hughes didn't perform. Another, I forget the guy, I think it's... A guy who's named Gene Adams or some kind of name like that, who did the record date for Bethlehem. Now, to get this particular album, it's I've never got, heard of that record no, before. And you know what? You know who has it? WBGO has it, and I forget who. I tell you, you could call Phil Schaff. Yeah, he could get it. Look, 
uh, I'd even do it. I'll do it myself. I'll call him one day because he played it. And I don't know whether this is the version that I'm on or not because there were two Bruce. versions done. And I don't know which one. You know, sometimes when I think about it, <laughs> and I knew how I threw that garbage can. <laughs> Top you playing down. drums too? No, yeah. I was playing garbage. I was playing a garbage can top. Yeah, because it it's a there's a, a place in 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 the the monologue. Like I say, it starts off about the it's tales of the city. This yeah. musician says, "I'm a jazz musician." It starts off, and the guy says, "I'm in this big city of New York, and the music is behind." He says. Oh, I'd just like to get down there and so I could dig the cats that's down on 52nd Street. But, man, I don't have a job. I don't even have subway fare. You know, that's how yeah, it's yeah, done. So, yeah. it's, so the guy, he bumps, hey, uh, hey, Bozo, man, you let me hold a dime on the go downtown. So I got my horn. I wish they let me sit in. So it's a thing where the guy... Lends this musician horn. He comes downtown, yeah, and he's going into Fifty Second Street or whatever, like Fifty. Mm -hmm. And I want to hear some jazz. I hope I get a chance. I love jazz. And Mingus had the music going from the subway, just like only eight pieces. Okay, let me see if I can find this thing. It's a nickel of it, cause you know, yeah. Dime. Hey, I got a dime. Let me put it in here. There we go. Now I'm gonna be down. Town here and the cats play that jazz. My love, I got my horn, and then you hear the music. Here comes the subway. Boom, and it stops. And he says, Okay, hold the door, man. Okay, I'm going. Okay, you can. He said, yeah, I'm on this subway and I'm going to, oh man, I'll be right in the And it's a subway, you know, Mingus has got all this, he would have stopped. Okay, here we are. It's 52nd Street. Okay, man. Okay, hey, hey, man. You got me caught. You got my got my coat caught in the toy, man. Hey, hey, conductor, over. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, man. Okay, I don't... He comes up and he goes into the, the, the jazz club. And then the music the Mingus got is go. Da, 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 da. And then you hear all this monologue. Mm -hmm. Now, he don't get the chance to sit in. All this is Mingus' music. And this is all on the album. And it's mono. Guy says, oh, man. Went down there in the mansion. Du, 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 du. Uh, I can get a chance to play. I got to get back on this sub and go uptown here. I'm busted on here. I can't pay. I'm going to see that landlady. And she's going to be asking me for my rent. And then the music goes again. Du, 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 yeah. du, 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 du. Oh, okay, here comes that sub. You know, and going back into that. Here's it. He puts his dime in, he goes over, gets up, boom, he's going back up town, where da -da 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 he says, oh, I didn't get a chance, but then when he goes upstairs now, where my part was, I have the garbage can, Yeah. And Mingus is there, <laughs> he's watch me, and when the guy gets to the part where he says, oh, and then you hear the band go, da -da -da, boom, here I am back. I don't know, huh? I thought I might get a chance to play. Because I love jazz. And it's like I heard Bud and the field. And man, and Max can boom, 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 boom. And man, I heard Dizzy playing this. And shoot, I didn't get a chance to play. And the bass go, Mingles go, boom, on his bass. Yeah. All this is on record. Then he says, well, let me go back up on this, and I got to hear my landlady. So he goes over, jump, jump, jump. Oh, here, here's my room. Boom, the guy, hey, man, how you doing? I was downtown. Um, hey, boom, 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 boom. Hey, who is that? This is, look, your landlady, you owe your rent. I told you I don't have it. I was downtown trying to get a gig. Well, look, you're going you're gonna to get more than you're going to get evicted. I'm going to throw you off. You don't pay. He said, who is that? It's the garbage man. Mingus told me, okay, Frankie, throw it. It's a boom. And I, I threw the garbage. The garbage can topped out. Mingus said, wait a minute, cut, cut it. Hey, Frank, 
You didn't throw the can down on time. You 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 behind it. T- hey, take that take over. I'm standing up, so I'm up here in, in, in RCA Victor Studio doing this Throwing thing. Garbage Throwing can. garbage That was my first record date in New York <laughs> with a garbage can top on Mingus's date. Because Danny Richmond was playing the drum. Yeah. He was playing, you know, playing all the intricate things, like yeah. the only things of, because he's yeah. playing that, you know, and, and, you know, the subway. <laughs> but my thing was when the garbage man, he says, who is this? Hey, man, it's a garbage man. You want your garbage man? Man, stop running. Stop. I'm trying to sleep. That's when I'm supposed to go, man. Yeah. And and I missed it. I must have hit it before the guy says, <laughs> stop that. I'm trying. I said, boom. And Mingus says, no, you're supposed to wait, Frank, until he says sleep. <laughs> he says, so he's these A and R men is out there looking at me and saying, "What in the hell? What in the hell are we doing with this kind of what kind of record date is this?" Yeah. Because, but you know what? And even then, and I said to myself, and I said, "This that was in 1960, uh, no, 1958 yeah. or 57, really." Yeah. Yeah. When this and you know it's 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 out now on Bethlehem. I think they have reissued this. Really, called, I'd love you to can hear it's it. called. You might not hear a garbage. You might hear it. You might hear yeah. you hear because well, I heard it. Uh, Phil Shaft played it. Yeah. Twice it's yeah. been played. And you heard the garbage can lid. So it might, but I say there was two. There was two. Uh, rec- <laughs> <laughs> Who was the second garbage can player? Do you know? Well, they didn't have, look, they just had, I think they had, well, Danny Richmond was throwing, so he blew, he blew a whistle. Yeah. I think that's supposed to be uh, the, the policeman coming and running after some of the, and, you know, that man's mind, his mind, his mind was, so, look, look at Tia one the moves. Yeah. Look at, look at, look at, look at, just ming us alone. Yeah. Mine was just too much. But I mean, I admired Mingus, but to, you know, to get back, you know, you were saying, you know, that they were asking me, did I get along? Or <clears throat> Mingus wasn't, like I say, anyone who stayed with him. Now, mm-hmm. Jimmy Nipper is another one I give credit to. Yeah. He stayed with Mingus a long time, too. Yeah. Mingus had, he was the type of, of uh, musician who, he believed in uh, accuracy and, uh, you know, perfection. Mm-hmm. He would rehearse and rehearse and rehearse over and over till it. You, you, he st- His house was on. Four, he had an apartment on Fifty Second Street between when I first moved to New York mm-hmm. between Eighth Avenue and 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 uh, uh, and Ninth Avenue. Mm-hmm. A brownstone mm-hmm. right there. I know where the building still is. That right on fifty. On, no, it was on fifty. The Union. No, this was on Fifty First Street. Because the Union was okay. on Fifty Second. Yeah. We go and we would rehearse and rehearse and rehearse until whatever. <clears throat> when we did that T one the moods, mm-hmm. we rehearsed at his house f- at least because Bill Trigula. The right. piano. You remember yeah. Bill Trigler from 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 uh, Westwood, yeah. uh, uh, New Jersey. Yeah. He was the pianist. Yeah. Jimmy Nipper was the, there also. We rehearsed, rehearsed until we got it right. You know. Yeah. And I used to sit up and say, "Oh my God, what is it? But oh, what's that? What's wrong with this man? But this man, he was a genius. He was. He was. Did you? Did he? Did your drumming change after being with him, or your concepts uh, drumming change? It, well, sure, Ming, it changed. Look, I'm going to tell you, it changed from three giants of jazz that I I was with I was with with, with uh, Sonny Rollins, mm-hmm. who was also a giant. Uh, Mingus, Monk, and, and Monk. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I I don't think I I I finished my uh, statement about Sonny Rollins. You know, mm-hmm. really me having such great admiration, not. Just as a you know great tenor player, which he is, but he also got me he his he humanity you know he he's a he's a great human because he got me into the union. He took a chance on hiring me in Birdland mm-hmm. when he could have lost his card because he wasn't not he was not supposed to have me working in Birdland. I still had another three weeks to go. Sonny Rollins took me into Birdland, <clears throat> and I worked that last. That's when Maynard Ferguson, 
all those guys that was mm-hmm. in that band had a chance to hear me plus Maynard. Yeah. Because at that time, Slide Hampton and uh, Don Sebesky, uh was was uh, they both of them were his two main writers. Right. Sebesky and Hampton, mm-hmm. Slide Hampton, did all mostly all arrangements. Right. Uh, the guys heard me, you know, play, and 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 uh, as I said before, Jake Hanna was leaving. They said, "Oh man, get 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 down line, get get you know, man, get." It's, so some of the guys said, "I noticed this, but he's playing with Sonny." Because see, Sonny didn't have a piano player. He he had started that that uh, what do they call piano. strolling. Yeah, okay. piano. See, was a trio. Yeah. I was working in, and Henry Grimes was on bass, and mm-hmm. and, and myself, and Sonny. So the guy says, "Well, yeah, he's he's keep, but but somehow or another, even I, <laughs> I still don't know t- today what they saw, and just I mean to to in other words, just to come to the conclusion, and I'm playing without a piano. They they got a big band there, mm-hmm. but yet and still they could hear something. They said, well, look, he's the one to get for the big band.' Yeah." I mean, I, I, I really don't, I really can't figure it, I can't figure it out. But they were looking for a drummer, and they says, get him. Because, see, they were, I was in the second group, yeah. and when Maynard was off, you know, there was on intermission. Sure. Because it was Sonny Rollins' group, and Maynard Ferguson's big band. In fact, he was called the Birdland Dream Band at that time. You know? Right, that's right, that's right. You remember yeah. that, yeah. yeah. But, but anyhow, uh, like I'm saying, I just said that to uh, finish out my statement about Sonny, he went and got my card for me and handed my 802 card to me in my in my hand, hmm. you know, and said, "Here, Frank, you know." And I and when I went with him, I said, "Sonny," I said, "Oh my God!" I said, I, had, I had played jobs with him out of town. I told him, "I well, he knew because that was the uh, the format then. It's not that way now, but like I say, you had to be a resident for three months." Sonny says, "Yeah, I I, I know." And he says, but don't worry. I said, Sonny, I said, I don't want to get messed up that I don't get my 802 card. Mm-hmm. Oh, he says, well, look, he says, don't worry. He says, things is just, you know, don't, don't. He says, don't worry about it. He says, uh, he says, this, you know, he, he's, he says, we got a little trio here going. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, just think about the music now. And he says that, he says, look, he says, I'm the one that's taking the, the, I'm taking the, the, the biggest load yeah. to do this. He says, so don't you, if I take this load on my shoulder to carry you in the bird, like, don't you worry. But even still, even with him telling me that, I wasn't relaxed because I'd already gotten thrown off. With I had Monk, gotten yeah. with his monk. Yeah. And if that same guy comes, of uh, course, <laughs> I know they have different <laughs> delegates for, for different localities. Yeah. But suppose he tells the other one, the guy comes and says, look, you had the same thing happen to you down here. Now look, you're going. To, you won't get a card now because yeah. you. We. That's what was behind. But you know what? Sonny came in, presented me with Mrs. Frank. Says, "Here's your card." Says I went up. Evidently, Sonny went up and saw. Now that goes for what I <laughs> like. I'm saying down there in Fort Fort Dix with Who you Nelson know? Boyd. Yeah, yeah. The same situation. Somebody was up there that was on the board of directors or somewhere, the whoever, because Sonny gave him a card and says, "Well, I'm gonna tell you, it wasn't. It was just shy about when he gave it to me. I, I, I was, I wasn't shy any more than about three or four, three or four uh, uh, days. Yeah. I mean, but I, but at least, in other words, but the thing is, I had been, I worked in in the Birdland for two weeks, uh-huh. which I, you know, did that band record? Well, that particular band, and the only the recording that I made with Sonny Rollins, uh, you know, hey, I'm glad that that I was fortunate enough to, when I did get the chance to record, I recorded an album that was a five star acceptance. You know, I, I what was it? What was that? That was the uh, Alfie, the, the Alfie uh, uh, theme. You know, he did that. Uh, huh. The theme from Alfie, yeah. uh, Sonny did with, yeah. with the big band with uh, under the direction of Oliver Nelson. I did that record date with him, and uh, what was that? Impulse? I, and all, it was. Wait a minute. Yes, it was. Was it? That's right. Impulse. Okay. Right. I said, yeah, that's right. Impulse. ABC Impulse. That's exactly. <laughs> that was that was the label it was on. Okay. It was on. We did it for Impulse, and uh, um, 
it was the it was it was the big band uh, under the direction of uh, Alvin, as you well you know Alvin else did quite a few things there you know for yeah. for for impulse but that was uh, uh, that 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 was my only no it wasn't the only recording I did one up at the uh, up in Lenox Mass uh, I don't think this was ever released it was a live recording at the jazz workshop with Sonny uh, with Sonny yeah I'm pretty sure yeah it was recorded. Wow. Okay, I, and, and that was, uh, no, 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 wait a minute. Not at the Jazz Workshop, at uh, uh, Herb Pomeroy's, uh, on Herb Pomeroy's program mm -hmm. uh, that uh, they came over that uh, uh, public uh, channel from, uh, from Boston. We yeah. went over there. That's when it was recorded. The, the recording company, you know, when Boston had had did that. It was a record date also on his program, and it was swinging. This thing was cooking like mad. You did know, you ever get a tape of it? That, that I did give. I didn't get all the numbers though, but I did. You know, I didn't get all the numbers, but mm -hmm. I got, I got part of, of the numbers. I didn't think that was that was never really released. But the uh, the date that I did with him with uh, with Alfie. Yeah. Yeah, it's the theme from Alfie, and, and and it's the big band uh, under the direction of Alvin Nelson. There's a lot of lot of great cats, well, a lot of good cats. And Roger Kellaway and J. J. Johnson was was on the scene there. Uh, uh, I think uh, who is with, with Monk? Uh, oh. the, uh, uh, with the the the, the uh, trombone, the trombone player that was there. What, what's his name? The little the little short guy with the with the with the black mustache. Is his name? Is it Berg? Is it last name Berg? Berg. I said Berg. Eddie Berg. <coughs> okay. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. 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 He was him. Another good player. Oh, he, he can play good. good, yeah. Um. So how did you like, did you like being with the uh, big band better than with the little groups? And what was it? Claude? Claude. Uh, yeah. you, Frank, you, you had the coffee? Oh, yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, um. You was you you asking me what did, did I you like prefer? To be? Yeah, when you went with Maynard, I mean that was like kind of a dream come true too. Oh boy, what a dream! You're talking about a dream come come true. I really didn't know what I was going to be uh, be accepted. We talk about that uh, a lot right now. Okay, about hang uh, on. okay, good well, deal. Quick. Okay. Yeah, John Bunch, you know, at the time, and right. since then, you know, he, you know, he went on with, uh, he was with Tony Bennett. He was yeah. almost 10, 10, 20 years. If you want to move any of those pillows, too. No, oh, yeah. oh, no, let's do this. This is sorry. But I was, I was just saying, I mentioned his name because he, uh, he usually, you know, conversation, mm -hmm. uh, you know, about, uh, you know, Frank, you know, <laughs> it wasn't cut and dry whether or not. Uh, you know, you, you know, when I was, you know, like in working out for Maynard, because really I hadn't really played. Uh, that was my first big band. My first, yeah, my first task. You know, it was my first challenge. To play with it, and you know, the rehearsal groups of maybe eleven, twelve yeah. pieces. And, <clears throat> but I mean to really play with, uh, with the drive that I had to have. What you did know? you did you have to do that? I mean, did you have to learn to play harder? I had to I had to learn to play harder. I had to I had to sharpen up on my reading because I hadn't really I had been playing any any music that that uh, required it any was all reading. Any, anything it, it was all, everything was charts. Okay. That was my first challenge when I first came to New York and playing with the groups like I said with then with, with Mingus. Yeah. It wasn't you know all I, uh, you know simultaneously along with in other words they had arrangements for him just to say it's uh, a difficult chart. In other words, it was mostly straight ahead and remember at this time you do this, do that. But just to have, I mean, you know, like especially those arrangements of, of slide, slide, and, slide and, and even Don Sebesky now, uh, he had an arrangement called Humbug, which Maynard played, mm -hmm. you know, he opened and all these you know dynamics yeah. and slide who was who was right at frame for the blues and and uh, slides derangement and all the jazz and then he did that oleo sunny rollins thing 
And all of those things, I mean, it's Yoko, that's his, yeah. you know, it's his tune. Yeah. Five would put the dynamics to it, and it was like, a, and hey, he would make arrangements, go home, and wham! It would, it, there it was in Joe's Avenue. I know Joe was, he had just come from Austin. He was in the band too? Joe, oh yeah, Joe's wow. Avenue. Joe's Avenue, that was Avenue's first job. Before Cannonball and all that. That was his first gig. Wow. And also Jackie Byrd's first job. Wow. When those two piano players, you know, Joe's Avenue played with Maynard. He had just come, he was just, and he didn't even have his citizenship. He came over on a, like a visa, a visiting visa. Mm -hmm. Because when we went to Canada, when we was playing for the uh, Jazz for Modern Store, and when we got ready to go to Canada, they stopped us at the border because Joe Zopnu kept us from going in. It was just on the good nature of the immigration officer, Leonard, who had a very good, you know, disposition, and yeah. his, his approach towards life, you know, was so calm. He never got excited. He had that little smile on his face. He always would reason. If it wasn't for me not being the kind of guy that he was, we would have never made the job. He would have had a breach of contract. If may not have been the guy that said to that immigration officer, "Hey, wait a minute, we got to make a job." Now, that guy, hey, look, you have a you you've got a foreigner. This man is an immigrant. He's from Austria. Yeah. He's on a visiting visa, not a working visa. Now look, I mean, in other words, they can go. They could have gone one hundred percent. Yep. But they didn't. Maynard was Maynard understood that he was very cool, and he knew. And he says, "Cause Joe says, oh my God, because he was shaking because Joe knew that he wasn't here yeah. on a, a yeah. working. He didn't have a working visa. Mm -hmm. But Maynard cooled it out and talked to those immigration officers. Cause he then two Maynards Canadian too, right. which know. helped. <laughs> Joe, we went on up to Toronto. So uh, it was it was Joe's first job. It was Jackie Byard's first job. So what was yeah, the right. difference now when you had to learn how to play harder, read better? Did you tune your drums? I had to. Lower? Yeah, I had to. And, you know, Jake Hanna, it's amazing because, you know, Jake Hanna wanted me to get, he wanted me to have, I told Jake, I said, and it was a, a toss-up of whether I was going to really make it because I was a little knackling arrangements. I, 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 I've got to, and, you know, and with the drummer reading, it's not like a horn play. Tune 20 that you're doing. You got your music all yeah. set in front of you. It's all, <clears throat> you know, uh, you know, it's all in order. Uh, you know, when you're doing twenty, when twenty is over, you know, to put it back, right? And push it back. You've got it all there. But me, I'm looking to the I, the music. It, it once the horn player usually, <laughs> if these guys can, he just sets it out yeah. and he starts do, 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 play. As soon as it's over, okay, what's the other chart? Uh, uh, we're gonna do eleven and two. He's already got them all pulled up. Yeah. If you're gonna do is give a set. Hey, we're gonna do five and we're gonna do nine. You know, five pull up four. If it's nine, pull up eight. You got all you gotta do is just yank yeah. it up. Me, I'm trying to learn the music. <laughs> I'm pulling the, the, the damn stuff falling on the floor. Just broke me. Oh my god. Uh, 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 wait a minute. Wait. Uh, uh, hold it. Uh, 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 you all right, Frank? And I'm saying, oh my God, yes. Oh, what, oh, what happened? And I missed the beat. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, 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 Frank, on that last thing. I said, well, what happened to me? Oh, uh, my uh, music, it, it fell down. Okay, pick, pick it up. I mean, it look, in all this, it's making me more nervous. Yeah. Then I pull up. Okay, fellas, let's take it from, uh, uh, we'll, we'll start from the beginning. And then we'll, we'll play we'll play it right down to, to, to J. And then we'll stop there. We're going to get just that. Oh, okay, here. And I really, so all of that tension mm -hmm. is it, it's, it's on the drummer because for the first place, I you can't set you can't, <laughs> you can't set, set your stand front, yeah. in front. It would be good yeah. that way because your director is up in front of yeah. you. Yeah. So it would be great if you could set it up where your tom tom mm -hmm. is. And usually you try to do that. It it doesn't stay. So. If they set a case, a reading case, it's either to the <laughs> left where you're constantly looking to the, to, 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 it's either one side, to the yeah. left side or to the right. Yeah. You still don't have full control to get the leader's eye. Now, you've got to look at him for the, for, for the, <laughs> the temple. Yeah. 
you got to watch the music, yeah. but you have to be the one that's playing. You got to when you when the beat starts, you got to play from the start to the finish. Yeah, your time carries it. You're trying to get the dynamics. Your tempo dr drops. In other words, what I'm saying is that it's so.